What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the cool show where I interview my cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg, and this is my cool friend, Ryan Clements. Oh, my God. And hey, we're back. What's happening? And we're it back. It took a big and... stretch, and we came out of the cryopods. Uh, but if, if you haven't been seeing my Twitters, ladies and gentlemen, it's been seven years, at least, since Ryan and I did a podcast that was like one-on-one intimate. I don't count. You, you worked at the PlayStation blog. I know we did a couple things there, but that was that was business. That doesn't count, you know? Yeah, Nobody's talking like about that. urinal sandwiches. You know, that, 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 <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. We're already rolling out jokes that people are going to be like, you know, those, they, those guys scared me with the jokes that they were talking about on that show. I just don't understand them. I don't know, you know, Ryan, of course, you missed being a founder of Podcast Beyond by like, two weeks or whatever it was but like like it's like three episodes later and they're like let's get this guy on the the most i know you you know you got smart you you know you left the video game press side of the industry you went to playstation work on that side then you ended up over at deck nine writing right yeah like i don't know how much interaction you get it but there is nothing more terrifying then the people who come up to me at shows these days shake my hand and go, oh, I got into this business because you're like, oh, my God, that's rad. Yeah, I was listening to Podcast Beyond when I was nine years old. I was listening to Beyond when I was 11 years old. You got me through it's junior. So I'm like, old. you, you, it's not even the old thing. I was just like, you are way, you, you were way too young. We did not realize someone that age would be listening to us <laughs> fart around in that podcast room. Let me, let me check the notes. It was not a family friendly podcast. <laughs> pretty sure. Pretty sure. Just, but, but this one, this one's going to be safe for all ages though. No, I mean, not a chance now. Is, Come on now. You, you put Paul Sider and Greg Miller together on a show. You're, you're fucked. It's uh, over. That's not, that's not gonna shake out. I, I want to just start by saying that not only am I super happy to be here and I'm really grateful for the chance to just see you again and talk with you in like a podcast setting. Yeah. Um, but it's just been amazing to to see all, all the success that Kind of Funny has had. And I mean, I feel like I really haven't touched base with you guys. Well, like as stated, seven, you know, in seven <laughs> years. So it's been you've you've had quite a bit of success in that time. I'm Shortly really before you, you left the Bay Area, we came over to your house met your Uh, child i remember that but it was and that was like even then was like the first time outside of an industry event that we had sat down and talked in forever i know i know it's been it's been really long and so this is a nice opportunity although you're so far away so very far in the old days we would have flown you in but now the covid times i know but yeah it's it still works and i it blows my mind that i can i can like just do a podcast with you by sitting at my at my desk I know, right? Yeah, well, I, there's you know there's pros and cons to it, but yeah, the I, the fact that now can you feel, you want to do this? You're like, I guess. <laughs> Let me get dressed. Let me throw on a headset. Come on over and do this. I was supposed to get dressed. Oh, oh no, God. just from the waist up. That's all you ever okay. have to worry about yeah. nowadays. Just waist up. Have you ever had? So wait, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt Please? you. But no, this is a conversational have, podcast. You know how it works. Have you had any like moments with a guest where the guest it'll just be that awkward moment where they'll stand up, they're not wearing pants or the kid runs in, or like the house is on fire, anything like that. We were interviewing on We Have Cool Friends, Tim Schaefer once. And, uh-huh. and like none of this is awkward because every it, it, I think it would be awkward for people if we weren't all in the same situation. If it sure. was like, oh, just California is on lockdown or just New York's on lockdown. Uh, he was on, in the podcast talking about, you know, Double Fine's anniversary and talking about their journey, where they're going, where they've been. And in the middle of it, like his wife walked in and was like, can you help me with these windows? <laughs> and he's like, I'm on a, I'm work, I'm on a show right now. <laughs> like, I can't help you. With the, it was groceries or windows. I forget what it was. <laughs> so like, that's, that's the, you know, the way it usually works. And, you know, what was the, what was the window work? Were they installing windows? And she's I think, like, yeah, they had windows like laying windows. there that they needed to move to get groceries in. I forget what the whole, the whole thing was, but it was, it's stuff like that. Right. Where I think you have it where people just don't understand like the, the things. Cause it all blends together now. I know Jen yeah. comes out of the room. She's never sure if I'm on a show or if I'm just hanging out. So it's and like, what, what is someone going on? back there? Is that Jen or is that someone else? That's Jen. That's Jen. Back okay. There. Ryan Clements says hi. Hi, Ryan. She says hi, buddy. Yeah. God, yeah. God, I could hear that through that. That is a nice microphone. Sir. That's the Elgato wave. You're a professional. I know, right? Yeah. The, when you <laughs> got on, you're like, oh my God, your shot's so good. I'm like, Ryan, this is all I do now. <laughs> we had, Kevin I, had to make it look good. Yeah, I know. And I thought I had a good webcam, but no, sir. 
No, no. Well, we have these full blown cameras. Ryan, you know, we jumped in here and assuming people know the entire history of Ryan Clements. I'm sure many don't. Who are you for somebody who's tuning in doesn't know your lineage? Sure. Well, right now I'm a writer and a narrative designer, and that's like most current form of Ryan. Sure. But I think a lot of people came into our orbit, as you were saying, when I was like a, a newbie editor at IGN many years ago, which I think I st- like, when did I start? Like 2007? Does yeah, that 2007. sound right? Yeah, yeah that's right. That, so yeah, 2007 started Podcast Beyond like episode four and was working with you like way back then when, when you know, I mean, you were handsome then, but you're way more handsome now. That's so true. I knew, I, I knew Greg, that. I knew Greg in his, in, in his lesser forms. <laughs> four um, times. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I worked at, I was at IGN for about five or six years. And then essentially after some schmutzing around, then I went to Sony, uh, it went to the Sony Interactive Entertainment uh, yeah. or PlayStation and was there for five years. And I just, one of the, fun, I don't know if I've ever told this story, but like I had literally just gotten, hold on a second, let me get it. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Now he, he gets up and has no pants on. Yeah, and I have pants. I literally, oh. I literally got this. Five okay. years of service, so, this is five so, years of service. Okay, yeah, you can see it. Uh, I I got this. I'm very thankful, and I've obviously kept it close because I love this, and I'm grateful for everyone at PlayStation. And then, like the day getting this, I also am like, well, anyway, I am departing PlayStation. Thanks for all the opportunities. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, well, uh, well, can we have the thing take- back? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can melt it down and give it to the next. We can the next out your name and put somebody else in there. That seems very disrespectful. So um, then, so then after after PlayStation, I worked for about two years at deck nine games and for those that don't know them they are kind of they got they've been around forever but um probably entered the mainstream consciousness um as doing life is strange before the storm Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is the prequel to the original life is strange it had no business being as good as it was (laughs) well thank you i'll tell them um (laughs) um, and now now i'm uh i'm kind of i'm in the ether and i'm looking for my next opportunity because i left deck nine only a couple weeks ago which is why i joked with greg before the show started that like i didn't need to ask anyone for permission before doing a podcast because i'm so used to checking with higher ups checking with with uh with the PR team, like you know, ask everyone, make sure you cross all your your T's, dot your I's, or whatever the saying is. But this time I was like, let's do it. Well, yeah, so, I mean that that was always the thing. I think you know you've been so high on the guest list for people when they request people to come through, kind of funny. But like when you're at PlayStation, I didn't even bother because PlayStation is like again, like, <laughs> it's just formal. It's just a formal business. And we are so who we you, are. <laughs> yeah, you well, you have to like everything that you do that's public facing, you know, it's 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 within it was within my responsibility as an employee there to make sure that I was being responsible and respectful to, you know, everyone that works there and so that that means that generally meant not gallivanting off and doing a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> we want to talk about that time so, we called Beyond a Hypothetical Abortion Podcast. Like, PlayStation's like, no, do not go on that show. Please do not go drag up these memories. So, yes, it was, uh, yes, now now I can enjoy this time. Uh, and, and yeah, and I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. It's great to have you. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is We Have Cool Friends. Each and every week, we bring one of our cool friends to the table to talk about the cool stuff they're doing. Of course, you can get this show on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. You can get it on podcast services around the globe. But of course, you can go to Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, where you can enter the friend zone, be a Kind of Funny best friend, write in with your questions for the guests, get the show ad-free, and support us on our quest to make the best podcasts ever. Ah. Uh, Today, we're brought to you by me, Undies, Manscaped, and Blue Chew, but I'll tell you about that later. So here's what I want to know, Ryan. I want to know about me, Undies, right now. I refuse to tell you about them right now, all right? Yeah. They gotta, I got to keep... <laughs> <laughs> People are here, they're like, mm, I don't know that much about Ryan. I'm not that interested, but they'll stay around for the me, Undies. <laughs> Wait, I can get my dad cheaper underwear for Christmas? Well, I got to hang uh, out and figure out what that's going to be all about. How, how, do you, how old do you feel? Because when you and I, I talked about having you on the show, and I was like, oh, man, it's been seven years. And then I mentioned something of uh, to you where I was like, you know, it's the weirdest thing where kind of funny feels like it's been around forever, but then also feels brand new. And then in the same breath, it feels like 2007 and working on 8,000 Mirabella, Mirabella, Mirabella Boulevard uh, was like yesterday. 
And so it's this weird thing, especially when I look at you uh, and how much you've changed, right? You yeah. talk about I look way more handsome. You look way more handsome, right? Than well, the the kid way, who showed up. I saw that. Hair. I saw that. I love it when you put in Google image search for Ryan Clements. It still brings up that photo of you with the poofy hair, those glasses, and like doing the thumbs up from like the oldest like best year end roundup 2007 article. Um. Yeah. I feel that's really funny, man. I want to get. I want to dig into that a little bit, but I. I think that part of me feels like those times are so so far away yeah um because like i think i get i get like extreme first of all i'm a nostalgia junkie we can i think people that like know the podcast i've like talked about how things trigger nostalgia for me and it's something that like that is a sentiment and that is like a part of of consuming art that's really special to me is like kind of tapping into something that goes that runs older and deeper than you and so i like I felt that way a lot when I was um when I was uh what was it what what like what triggered this for me when when IGN like finally was leaving their office on sure. on uh, on second and 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 there was tons of stuff going around on Twitter about that and a lot of the editors were sharing memories and photos and that that felt like another lifetime ago right. I think it's also not to get too philosophical but the when when you have a kid it kind of creates a delineation in your life between like before and after they entered your mm, space mm. and and your 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 existence and so like everything that happened before my son was born it feels like a, a different lifetime totally and 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 now i'm i feel like i'm living in this second you know much more difficult life <laughs> on hard mode it's new game plus. now it's now it's new game plus it's on hard mode all the enemies have double health it's really difficult <laughs> um and yeah and it's yeah it's 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 been really tough but it feels that feels so long ago but then as you say the moment that we start like you bring up this these stupid jokes that we have it takes me it snaps me right back so that was, was a long way of saying both yeah well i mean that's just the thing that i find such a a weird mashup and that's the thing too of like you know like i you know like in our company meeting or in every friday where we plan out what happens next week i'm like oh yeah and clements is coming in it's that thing of like oh wait so many of you have don't know him you know yeah. what i mean like it's not and even like nick scarpino like he doesn't know you like i know you like you know what i mean he didn't go on those trips to la to see whatever playstation thing's going on or talking to you while you're in japan reporting on the ngp about what the hell's going on and what it looks like and all that it, but and <laughs> oh so my it, god yeah i can't even imagine for you right because like even though i'm working out of my apartment now because of covid or whatever like my i started in 2007 at ign2 right just a few months before you and the way my job has evolved is still similar to what it was whereas you know what i mean like you 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 know you joke around about playstation pr of course you're talking about being a playstation employee but like i still talk to all the same playstation pr people i've been talking to for 14 years right <laughs> if i'm going to xbox i'm still talking to jeff rubenstein like before this the we were getting ready for the Fortnite stream so kevin was like turn it on to get it ready and so hdcp was on so i got up and i stood there and i'm I can hear you and I have the controller in my hands as I turn off HDCP like I've done a million times on PlayStation 4 or whatever I would do on PS3 to get it to work. And it's just like, God, it's such a that's the nostalgia that kicks for me. Those little moments in those muscle memories. Yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah, that's that's really funny. I, I want to talk a little bit about like making that leap into game game development. Yeah, because I think that's really fun. And it's something like you and I haven't really talked a lot about um, and I'm I'm eager to share. But HDC, I have not. I I don't even know how to do the HDCP anymore, dude. It's been that long for me, so <laughs> oh, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> Can you still use your printer settings on PS3? That's the big question. If I asked you to go through the XMB, you definitely not. I haven't had my PS3 plugged in anywhere in a long time. Yeah, uh, very a very long time. Um, yeah. So talk to I me. Don't. You're you're eager to talk about jumping to game development. Talk to me about that. When did you? Yeah, it, it was know because you wanted to do that. It was when you were describing like going through these things that you've been doing for 14 years. It kind of made me think about the, like I I forgot when it was, but I was sitting around. I I loved. Hold on a second. Quick pro prologue to what I'm about it. to say. Prologue. Tell me about folklore. I love. <laughs> <laughs> I. I adored my time at PlayStation. That's it. It was so. I'm so thankful to Sid who brought me on board. I I loved all my coworkers. It was it was like it was an amazing job. So I'm when I talk about leaving, 
I like to use, I like to reference that prologue because I feel like it's important for me to recognize like how, how fortunate I was to have that, to have that spot. But um, I, I remember sitting there at my desk and I think I like got a request because I was on the social media team, right? Which means, you know, not only was I doing similar things that I used to do to, to do at IGN, like editorial style content, previews, interviews, um, you know, features, but also doing, you know, just running their social media accounts and helping helping the team distribute content. And I remember like getting a request and it was like, we need you to write like the best tweet for Madden you can possibly write. And you're like, <laughs> we got to get Madden out hard this year. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm done. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I need something new. And I've always, I mean, I've always loved you. You, you know me, I've always loved being creative and writing, you know, fiction and writing um, yeah. things that are not just editorial. And I thought, and I was actually, I, okay, here's another great opportunity to give someone a shout out. I was so inspired by what Mitch Dyer did because mm. he's like this, this editor that came into IGN like fairly long after you and I did, yeah. I would say, like years probably, yeah, right? Yeah, he was I the mean, Casey forgot... Lynch era. Like, so yeah. what, that would have been like 2011-ish? 20... I mean, we were in the new office, so definitely yeah. somewhere in there, yeah. Your your memory is so much better than mine, dude. Well, I'm um, probably wrong about all that information. I'll just text Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally I have him on Discord. I could probably uh, I can oh, message you play him. Dota anyway, with him, huh? I <laughs> I actually I I have tried Dota before. Though I'm the worst Dota player of all time. Anyway, wait. Uh, that's not the point of the story. The point is, um, I was so inspired by seeing Mitch like go basically go from like oh, I'm an editor at IGN to I'm going to write the campaign for one of the biggest Star Wars games you know to come to to come out to hit totally. like modern consoles and I was like first of all amazing second of all if that's something that he can do and he's passionate about maybe that's something I can do and that's why I started really pushing myself to like how can I enter into a more creative space um and that's when you know that's in like what 2000 17 or 2018 when I started to apply around to a bunch of different spots and that's when I was really lucky enough to have the chance to go over to deck nine uh, and and work with them on the literal only thing I can say which is a narrative adventure game published by Square Enix because it's not it. out yet that's the deal right it's that's not it's happening. not even revi- that's all that that's literally the, the 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 total amount of public information of the game is that it is a narrative game published by Square Enix so <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I, I, for the record, Mitch has responded that I was, I am correct. October 2011, he was contract wow. full time. February 2012, full time immigrated. Is that, is, is Mitch the one? This here, here's talking about tapping into weird stories. Was that the time when you were giving a pep talk to like all the editors in the bullpen and you were like, look, guys, like this is our chance to make a more welcoming, kind environment to the new editors. Like what this is what we can do. We can welcome we can welcome Mitch. We can bring him on board. We can show him the ropes and we can like build a new editorial future at IGN. And the moment Mitch walked in, you were like, boo, boo. (laughs) And we were all like, what the hell were you just talking about, dude? (laughs) Listen, I don't want a lot of people, all right? Like, they have to understand. It's similar to what we're talking about with the cursing on this show or whatever. Like, you got to know what you're getting into. Where, yeah, it's going to be a welcoming environment, but we're going to boo you sometimes out of fun. You know what I mean? And I knew him at that point. Mitch was fine. He would have been fine being booed. Don't worry about it. I mean, you laughed. It was hilarious. See, and that's how you know you're going to fit in. It's yeah. the people who watch it. If, if you walk in and we burn you and you tears. get mad, you weren't going to, you weren't going to make it. <laughs> get out of here. All right. <laughs> I mean, that's back to what I was talking about, right? With like how I felt IGN worked. And I told, said, told the story many times with you, I think being the example of like, IGN is a, or was, I should not say is, when we were there decades ago, yeah. it was a, a, it was a den full of cats. And when you'd introduce the new cat and all the cats would hiss at it and be annoyed by it. And then one day out of the blue, they'd be sleeping on top of each other. They'd be family. <laughs> they'd be sharing food and toys. Uh, like it was the weirdest sharing thing. All I'd... their cat alcohol. Yeah, I exactly. Got it. exactly. It was all, all, it was the weirdest thing of you'd go on these trips and come back and you'd be bonded with people that you, you know, had worked with, but didn't talk to or whatever. It was the strangest mm-hmm. experience. Oh but yeah. For strange experiences, like you talk about, like you see Mitch do it, that inspires you. Yeah. W- what do you, I don't right now, if I woke up tomorrow and I was like, you know what? I want to be a narrative writer on a video game. I want to, I want to write a video game. I would have no fucking clue what to do, how to submit what I need. Like, what was your first step on that journey? Um, a lot of trying to 
better myself as a candidate and better myself as a writer which which meant like kind of giving giving myself an education in the in the parts of the craft that I kind I sort of kind of missed like either in school or in my career afterwards because I mean you know with the right tools like with a with a screenwriter you know with the right tools like with final draft or fade in sure. like you could totally write a screenplay it's going to be like the world's worst screenplay but you you can do it and so I started just reading a lot of literature and practicing um and and making and you know whipping up samples and just trying to feel out like what that part of the craft really entails gotcha um and and yeah and then but I, but I was also very lucky in that I like I learned a lot at Deck 9 like I'm I'm like light years ahead of where I was 2 years ago which is really sure. helpful so yeah so what's next like i the other thing i i know about you i remember when we were 2007 at ign and i remember like you know it's sf and we're entry level and we're making no money i i'm not gonna specific by any stretch of imagination but i remember you were putting aside a ginormous part of your paycheck into like a 401k long before any of us were even thinking about it and you and i you were just like i just want to be sure i just want to make sure I'm fine. And I, yeah. it cemented for me like when i think of young ryan of such a worry wart and try you know what i mean like always trying to make sure he had a plan for what was going on mm -hmm. where are we now with that like obviously because yeah. i can't even imagine like right like you know you're on your own right now you have a child you have a house you're you know you're like where are you at right now with in general i guess what 2020 has been but like right now in career part of it all yeah i mean that's that's a great question <laughs> i'm also thinking i want to i want to talk like about tires exploding and 401ks and all oh the, funny, the funny ryan clement stories i haven't but... thought about you being terrible <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> that, i haven't thought of that story in a decade because what was it you were you were just driving on the highway with somebody coming back from the mall you're like i always worry about my tires exploding. no that's a gross oversimplification of of the fear of the it was because do you remember do you remember the the, the first little chevy that i owned yeah um, like it was the most bare bones car i mean because like you know i bought it when i came out to california and like here we go this is totally not answering your question i'm sorry um we'll get to but, it Fuck it, don't get me yeah well, <laughs> but like but it, it would make this sound when you were on the highway and and it was like a, this howling and i can only i can only imagine it was just a weird way the wind was hit it was you know <laughs> bouncing off the windshield because nothing ever happened but i remember hearing it for the first time i was like well that doesn't sound good it sounds sounds like the tires could explode <laughs> maybe not maybe not that but like i would ask people that got into the car when we were driving down the highway or going to whatever god-awful food we would drive to oh, um, for lunch let's go to, let's go to julie's uh, let's go to I would, yeah, I would i would be like do you hear that and and then you would always like laugh because you were just you would always envision me like white knuckling my steering wheel like yeah, yeah, like yeah. they could explode at any minute and we're all gone like a blink of an eye snuffed out like a candle extinguished in the in the water <laughs> Gone. so yeah just gone no i that that was it that's the extent of the story is my car made a weird noise and nothing ever came of it and you worried about it forever but, uh, yeah well it's not like i actively worry about it now but <laughs> oh, no, I, now you're, I, now you got love, worries. I love i love that story because it's like in, it's so indicative of my personality which is yeah i mean it was i worried a lot more back then yeah i think i'm a, i'm a lot different of a person now uh, you probably are too but of course i'm I'm such a different person now than I was back then. Back then, I was just this, I was a little crazy, this crazy worry wart. I mean, like, I, I can't even, I can't even, like, look back there without cringing at myself. It was so funny. But anyway, I don't even know what your question was, dude. What were we even talking about? I was, we were talking about now. So now you're, you know, you're, what's the next step for you? Where, where do you, I mean, the, are... the, ne the next step is I actually, I'm, I'm open to doing, you know, freelance and contract work but i'm i'm actively exploring and applying to other studios to mm -hmm. other studios that need writers that need narrative designers um but i'm kind of i'm i'm working i'm working on some contract stuff for a, uh for a friend right now but um yeah i mean like that i think that freelance is an incredible opportunity um but it's also i love working in a studio because i feel like it's a really great way to learn sure. and to grow um, and, and that's something that I would really love to keep doing.
So that's kind of, that's in my, but I mean, dude, like me leaving deck nine, that only happened like what, three weeks ago now or roughly give or take. So, yeah. I mean, it's been, it is, it's like barely been enough time for me to like update your resume and like, you know, <laughs> do, like look online and see like, well, who's, you know, who has openings right now. So um, it, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot. And then of course, you know, just doing contract work on the side, it's uh, trying to stay busy. Also there's this whole pandemic situation, which yeah, uh, eats up a lot of, yeah. A lot of time. I will say that when you have a kid and that kid doesn't have school or childcare, it definitely um, it occupies a lot of your mind and your energy during the day, uh, which is something that I do. I do. You know, no one should envy parents during a, a global pandemic right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so. I, a whole bunch of stuff I want to dissect there, but for the game side of it, mm. do you? feel like you're part of the games industry on that side the creator the developer that that part of it like or is there like imposter syndrome or like do you feel like you have your place there because you know whenever Mm. there are you know layoffs or projects ending or whatever you're talking about you know doing freelance work with the buddy right now but like you know there usually are so much so many moving parts for people to continue to make games and stuff like yeah you had two years at deck nine do you feel like you're established well am i established it's not like i'm there are so many incredible narrative designers in the industry. I would say that I have gotten an enormous amount of experience in those two years. That's really going to be that I really value, Mm. but established. I don't know because I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of narrative designers and writers in the game space have been doing this for way longer than two years and have had, you know, they've written for multiple games. And the, the, the tricky thing they that can I, talk about their game, right? <laughs> that they can talk about. That's the key is that when, and I, I think it's going to be really fun and I would love to keep, you know, check in with you in the future. But when I can actually talk about the game, that's going to be super fun. Um, and that's not <laughs> something I could do right now. Sure. So, you know, that, that'll be, that, that'll be, that'll be something to look forward to. And it will be a boon in, you know, in that, you know, in my next step in my career. But I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm established because you you have to I, th- then I automatically compare myself to other famous narrative designers and people that have been around for a lot longer and they they just have more experience and that's something that I I want to continue growing is that experience. So I guess are you so you're not you're not worried out there global pandemic no job you're deadbeat I, you, I, you know what I mean your wife's supporting you trying to keep this baby fed everything else. You're as happy to come he's in this not, room. He's not a baby. You know that he's grown since you last saw him. He doesn't just enter stasis. I haven't <laughs> seen a photo in a long time. All right. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. He's he's like four and a half now. Can you believe? So he that? can roll over now. He. Oh yeah. He's he's doing a lot more than rolling over. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Well, let me let me talk about it a little bit. We can get into this a little because I think it, it it's kind of a good segue. I'm I'm very lucky that in in kind of an uncertain and difficult time kind of a sudden shake up in my career um, i have a partner who can i can lean on and i think that's something that i really want to give her credit for and the people that are in similar situations like it's it's really nice to be able to lean on her and you know the like the classic dilemma that i think a lot of folks have in the in any industry is like hey will i will i have health care like it's a global pandemic. Like, you know, how do I take care of myself? How do I take care of my family? And I'm lucky that, you know, my partner has, you know, we can just roll right onto her healthcare plan. And we are a lot more fortunate than uh, what a lot of folks are dealing with nowadays. And I, I do not take that for granted. Sure. Um, I also, and again, I, I knew that like, I, I wouldn't want to bum out your show too much, but um, I'm away. Yeah, just bump, just just bump like these let's kids just, out. Let's just fucking sink into the earth, man. <laughs> um, uh, so you know, I as as some people who follow me and and are like and are my friends know and you know and we've talked about it. I lost my mother to cancer in June, mm-hmm. and um, that pretty much being the hardest point in my life, and simultaneously, you know, when now now all of a sudden I have to. I'm her sole heir. I have to manage all her, you know, kind of her her estate and her her life assets. Yeah. Um, that that was 
an opportunity for my now my family and I have a little bit of breathing room, even in this moment of uncertainty, sure. where I can I I can take my time. I because I what I want is I want my next step to be the right one. And yeah, I don't not wanna, not out of desperation. You don't want to rush into something. You want to make sure that it's the right fit for for you and your family. And I really. I guess I just want to say that my heart really goes out to folks that maybe don't have the luxury of time. They don't sure. have the luxury of of like a, a stable financial situation um, because it it's 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 terrifying. And I I really like my my heart. Yeah, my heart just goes out to folks that are in that situation um, right now. So I'm I am not worried because I as you know I'm it pretty much ever since day one at IGN I'm perpetually try and stay positive and stay hopeful yeah and uh, and and try and find the good in in life and what's what's you know the next thing for me so I'm not I'm not super worried and dude that 401k I mean I told you like there I you I'm, I'm I'm fine they don't worry off about the restrictions it. during this pandemic you can take it out <laughs> and not have any of the problems I was reading I'm not, hey dude I'm not gonna take out of my 401k are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> so how do you do that that's one of the things I think that you know I'm How always take out of your 401k. No, 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 no. I don't know. Well, give me your account number in the last four years. <laughs> I'll get in there for you. No. How do you stay positive? I think people, you know, always talk to me about that because it's something I put out on the internet, but I know how hard that is in general, let alone into 2020. So then to be on your side of it, right. Of like, mm. you know, to lose your mom, lose your job, like, you know, to be in this situation, how has the world not broken Ryan Clements? Hmm. Okay. Good question. Thank you. I still got it. Um, you still got it, man. Okay, well, let's get into it. I two things. First thing, I I am I am aware that I the challenges that I have faced in life are challenges that are I have been able to overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that for a lot of people, maybe even some listeners out there, uh, uh, some of your some of your community who who have not been able to stay positive. Um, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say that that's a, a fault of theirs or that it's, uh, it's, it's the wrong way to approach hard times because yes, I encourage people to stay positive, but like, you know, I am, I am not someone who's struck by a disability or, uh, like, uh, an impossible financial strain from like, uh, not having healthcare, um, or, you know, like being you know, suddenly losing their home. Like there's, there's so many, there's so many things that are really hard in the world. So when, I guess this is my opportunity to say that yes, Ryan Clement stays positive and, is, and tries to smile, but I think that everything that life has dealt me, I, I've been able to handle and it hasn't been too much. It hasn't been like, insurm- you know, insurmountable. Sure. Um, and and I, I like to recognize that, but then at the same time, there's a famous quote and I wish I, the, because I'm on the spot, I'm going to forget who said it. Um, but he's, he was like a, like a world renowned longtime journalist. Um, Jean-Claude was Van Damme. Like, it was not Jean-Claude Van Damme. Sorry. Uh, great, great guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that positivity. And, <laughs> and, and he, you know, in, in like a town hall or in like a, in like a big conference he was in, he, he, I heard it on the radio and it really resonated with me. He said, I do not despair. And, and I think that it's to be able to stay positive, to not despair is a powerful tool, even when like, that's all you want to do, uh, it, because it, it doesn't really serve you. It can't really help you to despair and to lose hope. Um, it can usually only hurt you. Now, those feelings of hopelessness, those those negative feelings, sadness, anger, all those things, those are normal. Those are natural. This is like me, Ryan, the dad talking. I'm like encouraging yeah. all the young the young people that listen to this totally family friendly show. Um, the uh, you know all those things are normal, natural, and I invite people to feel those things when they come. But ultimately, you are not served by a feeling of despair and hopelessness. It will you know, it, it, it will eat away at you. Um, and that's why we were just talking about it before the show started, like even just trying to stay positive, even when life is like just kicking you in the stomach, it can help a lot. And, and that's kind of what I've done. 
I'm, I, I'm I'm probably rambling too much, Greg. I'm sorry. Yeah, trust me. They this is uh we have cool friends. It's not Greg talks, so everybody wants to hear you talk. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that at all. Uh, Ashimbo in the chat says Walter Cronkite. That was the journalist you're looking for. Does that sound right? Is it, is it like Cronkite? Cronkite? It it, sounds, it, that's what it, he says. It, it might have been. It might have been. Okay. Yeah. Um, the question I have off of what you just said is this: You said, you know, oh, I'm being a, I'm being, I'm slipping into dad mode here. I'm being a dad. That's the other thing. So we talked about like my question of like obviously because I'm I am a talentless hack who just talks about games. You made the jump to making games, and I was wondering how that feels to come from our world. How does do you feel like a dad? Like I, you know, Jen and I were talking today on our morning walk about oh you know if we were like how are they going to do stick with me this is a walk how are they going to do uh the vaccine when the vaccine's here how do they actually decide who it goes to and what it does and jen said well all right let's let's say we were doing it and then she goes oh my god like the people who are doing this are adults like us they don't they probably don't know what the hell they're doing either and that was the thing where i was like every adult's just faking it right no no adult knows what's going on do you feel that way about fatherhood? Do you feel like I'm a dad and I, I I am a dad and this is my child and this is how it works? Or do you feel like, oh my God, are you white knuckling it? I don't know what happens next. <laughs> the tires get exploded any minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I do feel like a dad, like almost comically so. And I like to the point of where dad jokes are now becoming something that resonates with me deeply. Did you see the Justin Davis like really bad? old dad jokes and punny jokes he was he was no, putting up on no. twitter recently i almost want to tell it on the show but i'll maybe i'll maybe i'll, I'll save that for later in case we get some dead air um <laughs> <laughs> we're just staring at each other <laughs> but like i uh i do feel like a dad and i don't know what i'm doing and it's really really the hardest thing i've i've ever done um being a parent is a fundamental shift in the purpose of your life and it is it, it really does complicate and make more difficult every other thing in your life. Well, simultaneously, I think also showing me, like, if there is a purpose of life, and I don't even know, I'm not even certain that there is yet, besides to exist, uh, I think that being a parent gives you a glimpse into what, what it means to participate in the act of continuing life in the universe. And to me, that's miraculous. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, really, really something that's incredible uh, to like to be able to see to see your child grow, to learn, to love. And it it feels uh, amazing. It's also like so fucking hard. Like it's <laughs> it's it's crazy. And and I and I do think that is that there to be a good parent, you know, it, it's such a high. There's so many demands on on people nowadays, on, on parents to to be good parents. Sure. Um, and again. A global pandemic does not help. The world is in a difficult spot, and it's it's really tough. But uh, it also gives you a lot of joy. So um, I I do feel like a dad, but I don't. I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. And you learn a lot as you go. Uh, and and I think that's important to keep in mind. Really, for any like big life endeavor, a lot of it is like can can you learn as you go? Because you you gotta. When you say it's the hardest thing you've ever done, what is that? mean to you what is the example that springs to mind because like I, I think it's one of those you don't know till you know kind of things yeah so like to be on the other yeah. side of the door you don't know what's going i don't know what's going i'm yeah. like i don't know money the kids got tough questions i'm not sure what the hell the problem is <laughs> it, it it's kind of it can go between um physical demands and emotional demands mm -hmm. right like when you're when you're and it, and of course every parent is going to have a totally different every kid is different so every parent has a different you know experience and journey but that journey uh rated high on ign another good game um, another good yeah. game <laughs> so um yeah like i when when my son was was small and like pre sleep training i mean the exhaustion that you feel is almost unlike any other type of exhaustion i've ever felt before and now I like to, again, I like, I guess this is a show of caveats because I like to give caveats to like, there are obviously people like surgeons that are up for like 36 hours. Like, okay, dude, you got me beat. Totally understand. But don't forget E3. Said, don't forget when we used to cover E3. For, 
Yeah, I, I remember E3. It wasn't as bad as E3. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but like you know, you you the the demands that like are put on people on parents, especially like during sleep training, if their kid has sleep disorders or issues. Like I think I read somewhere that it like it resembles like the a parent going through that resembles the similar physical demands that like a prisoner of war feels <laughs> because sure. like sleep is one of the most fundamental needs of the human body you are being like robbed that every day with almost with very little um you know respite and it's very hard and 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 you just push through that and you you know you work on it and you try and lean on family when you can and then you start getting into like the more emotional demands like you know how do you explain a very difficult world to you know someone that is completely innocent and yeah. does not understand like what it means to be evil or to you know suffer loss um the fact that he lost his 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 grandmother his nana uh, it's it, that was one of the hardest parts about losing my mom was that like very first conversation having to see how crestfallen he was like she's gone and you know you can't Does he talk get to that? Did he get that? He, I, when, when, when my, you know, my mom had, had fought cancer for many, many years. So in the back of my mind, I always had to prepare myself for the possibility, if not the eventuality that she would, she would pass before her time. And so I kind of tried to prep Soma a little bit, you know, prep my son a little bit and, and kind of talk to him a little bit about life and death in very small ways. This was like in the months, years leading up yeah. to the loss of my mom, I would say like, oh, like, look, like if we saw, I know this is going to sound really silly and really um, like uh, almost trivializing the loss of human life, but, but stick with me on this. Um, like if we saw like a spider that had died in the house, I would like, we would stop and we would like give it, give pause. And I would say, this was once alive and it's not anymore. Like its body is not moving, it's gone. Um, and I would try and teach him through examples in the real sure. world. And I think that, that actually, sense. it helped a lot. Um, but of course nothing, you know, really prepares you for, for the loss of, of a parent. But yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, have I have I thoroughly bummed out every? It's like the Twitch is the Twitch stream at zero viewers. Cause, no, no, they, man, they oh, it's gone up. They were this. They want more death. No, I'm just, <laughs> but no, they're the chat's very supportive of you right now. Don't worry about that. Don't worry so, about that. Yeah, this I can't read. I'm not. I'm not looking at it. I'm just looking at you. That's all I'm looking at. <laughs> smart. See, a lot of people get distracted by it. Don't worry about it. No, it, it, dark dark rise too says we love Ryan, and so there's a lot of fuck cancer in there, and people are you know very much on your side. Don't worry, we have a good audience. You know that. Yeah. YouTube audience, that'll be a different story. <laughs> Why are they talking about PlayStation? I want to know what hey. it is. Five. Hey, sing the silver and gold theme song again. <laughs> it's like, wait, I wanted to talk about life and loss. <laughs> I yeah, I can't even imagine like you know having to explain those things and like, let alone like you know like for me it's always the concern right as you know jen and i uh, don't have children and haven't conceived any and i keep but i keep getting i keep getting ghostbuster toys for them just in case in case we ever turn the corner but for me it's always those days where i am a grumpy asshole where i want to play games but there's something i have to go do there's some chore to go to this there's an unexpected a minor inconvenience that pops up that keeps me from doing what I had in my head planned. I'm like, meh, meh. and when I, you know, you know how it is when you're being a, a jerk, you can't just say stop being a jerk. Like, right. You have to get out of it. But I do have those moments of like, I guess I have to embrace it and enjoy it while I can, because if we ever have children, right? Like I can't do that. Like oh, dude, uh, kiss, kiss the gaming time. Goodbye. Like I love, <laughs> I love those articles where like, how can you still be a gamer as a parent? Fuck that. You can't, <laughs> like, <laughs> you could do your best. You could do your best. You could try and you can try and carve out what little time you can. And of course people make it work, but it, you know, again, like if you really want to put in the time and you are a busy working adult, it's it's such a it's such a fundamental change to your schedule you really just have so little time for yourself because yeah. so much of it has to go into the day-to-day -day. yeah so. that's my hope is 
again, if we ever have a kid, that my workaround for it will be the fact that I can game at work. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, I'm not, you're you're a working adult writing about games or writing right. a game. Whereas, right. like, hopefully I can just be like, you know what? We're, we're I'm streaming on Twitch all day long. <laughs> like, that's what I'm fucking doing, Tim. Suck it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> run around and do that kind of thing to make it work. But yeah, like, I, yeah. Do you, it, do you feel like you've played anything? I year? actually have. So the, the the thing I like I joke about and I've talked about on podcasts before is like the um uh the like maybe hour to hour and a half I can squeeze in after my son goes to bed. Yeah. But then before I inevitably collapse from exhaustion <laughs> is is like that's that's game time. And of course I obviously want to alternate that with spending time with my partner and like her and I'll like watch we're watching Queen's Gambit right now. Oh great, great show. Excellent show so far. Um and but like, yeah, dude, I've, I, I mean, get ready for those that listen to the PlayStation broadcast. Here's, here's a, a recurring segment, but like, you better believe I'm still playing Final Fantasy 14, the MMO. Oh, I've, been playing that. I've been playing that for like five or six years now, dude. I mean, still yeah, I mean, I, the entry area, but <laughs> I assume, <laughs> I'm still in the tutorial. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I, I, by the way, I got, I, I mean, that's a good opportunity for me to ask how that DC universe online is going for you. I mean, I can only assume you're still playing it every day. No, not every day. I check, in, I check in once in a while. All right. The Green Lantern, Taylor Swift did move over to being a hard light Green Lantern main. I'll have, you know, so that's what's okay. been happening over there. But is yeah. there, is there like any chance in hell that you would like play another MMO or was that just a perfect storm of like it's DC it like had the feature the crunchy features that you wanted it came at like a good time and now you're done like you'll never return to MMOs again I mean it's similar to I always we joke around this in the show a lot of like remember when we started and it, people would come back from previews and be like oh they're they're integrating RPG systems oh it's an RPG light and now just Every fucking game is an RPG. There's, you know, there's stat points and there's this and there's that. Yep. I feel like the traditional MMO has, and don't get me wrong, they still exist, obviously. Look at WoW and Shadowlands coming out this week or whatever, or last week. Mm. Uh, they exist, but I still think that's broken down in such a way where it's like, I, you know, for all of its many flaws, still like Avengers. I'm still working on, on platinuming Avengers. And my clock, when the PlayStation dropped, was 125 hours into it or whatever. It's like, I'm playing that with a smaller group of people. It's not the MMO of like I'm running around, you know, Metropolis or Gotham and seeing dozens of people like you do in DC Universe Online. But it's still the same idea, right? Where I'm grinding. Like, you know, isn't in a lot of ways Destiny an MMO? And I'm not <clears> playing <throat> Destiny, but it's that yeah. idea of like those things yeah. are there and they are happening. And so, yeah, it's a perfect storm in a way, even though I still... It was funny. I, you know, the thumbnail we're going to use is an old photo. So I just put into my my phone because I still never delete photos from my phone. I put in, uh, you know, 2011, <laughs> 2012, and I ran into uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic when I made my Taylor Swift character in that MMO on my PC, you know, in the whatever room. And I was like, I always in the back of my mind, I always kick around doing that, going back to that, and starting fresh because mm. the game's obviously completely different, or whatever. But like, I miss Kotor so much mm. that like the idea mm. of just doing that and running through it. But like. It's I'm right. Even by no means am I as exhausted or as busy as you having a child. But it's the same. It's a lot well, of the same things. No, you you keep real, dude. You keep really busy. You work really hard. Thank you. But it's the same thing where like when I do get you know when Jen goes to bed and it's time for me to like get lost in a game, I do the same thing you do where it's just like. I don't do I want to I'm I'm exhausted I'm only gonna be awake an hour at tops do I really want to start something fresh no yeah. so right now it's you know go run a, a couple quests in Valhalla uh you grind this stupid hive trophy and goddamn Avengers that's killing me like you know what I mean like that play this stupid game for a platinum while I listen to a podcast it's an MMO is such an undertaking right and like I, you, you look at me of like the games I've tapped out on or put on pause that you know you get 35 hours into and you're like all right well I need and because it's still the same thing too of like you know, my side of the industry where it's like, cool, I've put 35 hours into this game. It's great. And I really enjoy it. But I have two other things that are stacking up on my thing. And right, like right now, right? Like the PS5, I just downloaded two games on embargo and, and not cyberpunk. Don't worry. And it's that thing of like, shit, I need to play these before cyberpunk gets here. And then even when cyberpunk gets here, it's like, I think nothing else is coming out for the year. So hopefully I get a few weeks with that. But it means that I'm not making any progress in Valhalla, Phoenix, whatever from there on out. Like it's yeah. such a it's such a juggling act. And I think, you know, even for having, you know, no kid and, you know, having a job that we I created that's just talking about games, 
during the day, I never get to fucking play games. It's so rare during a, a day that I'm not on a call when I have a free, when I'm not on camera or I'm not answering an email or doing whatever. It's such a juggling act for everybody, I think, being adults, let alone to get out and, like you were talking about, that quality time with your partner, right? That's the yep. never ending yep. struggle of, all right, cool. Jen and I have existed in the same house all day and we've had conversations yep. here or there, but like, they're usually about industry stuff. So what about the actual adult things that I need to answer in emails for us or do this thing or run a chore? Like, I ju- this is a conversation that just triggered, right? I was supposed to go to the pharmacy today to get the other half of Portie's pills. Like, I glided right past that on the calendar this morning, building a show to do, you know. It's just how life is right now. Thanks, Clements. God. 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 I want you to know, Portie, come here. Portie. Aw. I haven't seen Portie in a long time, folks. This oh, dog's death is on your hands because I didn't get to the pharmacy to get his pills. I All knew right? you were gonna make. I knew you were gonna make a joke about this. Oh my god! Look at him. How old is Porty now? He is uh, fifteen. He'll be oh my god sixteen next summer. Yeah, he's a cutie. Ancient. The other cutie. the other day, uh, I was doing a not the other day. I guess we, months ago now, we did a, a, a Zoom call to watch the Mizzou game. Me and a couple of the antlers from that I haven't talked to equally in forever. And in the middle of the call, we'd already been on it and hanging out and. I was like, all right, I gotta go walk. I gotta go walk Portillo. And one of my friends on the call goes, Portillo is still alive. <laughs> you know I mean? like, oh my god! For the for the for you know your friends, I don't you know post on fucking Facebook. So it's like for your friends that aren't following Twitter or anything, but your career or whatever, and they just don't. They haven't thought about Portillo since two thousand and eight. And yep. then I'm like, oh, I gotta take this asshole out. Do you remember I when the one time I babysat Portillo at, at your old ass apartment? Yeah, yeah. And like the funny story that I always, this is, this will not embarrass you. This is embarrassing to me. I, 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 I like you, you had me like, my task was to go to, you know, check in on Portillo when, when you were out of town. And so I was like up in my apartment. I, I think I was probably in San Francisco and you were living what, like in, in, uh, what was the name of that goddamn town? Oh, hey, so this is like when I first moved here. Yeah. Uh, so I did South San Francisco for nine months, but that was when we were first, first party wasn't here. So it would have been Berlin game. Mater- Berlin game. It was Berlin yeah. game. That's right. And so I like had the key, right? So like you gave me a key to let myself in so I could take yeah. care of Portillo. I drive all the way through like California traffic. I like get to your apartment and I'm like, I didn't bring the goddamn key. Like <laughs> you stupid fuck. What? And, and then I was so, I was so crestfallen because it's like that realization when you've made a mistake and there's nothing you could do about yeah, it yeah right like, yeah, there's I, no out to just... do like you know lock pick my way into your apartment like i've just got to get get my ass back of the car and i drove all the way back then all the way back down again and then had to of course come go back home and it was just like i that was funny that was when why. you were living in brisbane right i was no i wasn't i in was i in san francisco at that time or was that in no i guess i was in brisbane. That been, yeah because you yeah, that makes sense, right? Because I yeah. maybe no, that makes sense. Yeah, because you moved into the sunset eventually, but I think that eventually. was after we already we already at the new office. I think, right? I don't I don't remember. Yeah, it's yeah. a blur. Don't ask yeah. me for dates. It's the same thing of like again, like you know, I feel like it's one of those things where like you went through the portal, whereas I'm still here. So like all the all the references uh, I give you are like so second day. We were talking about <laughs> intersections earlier today. Are you still in that one apartment? I'm like, oh no, I moved years ago. Moved out. Of there. Like, you know what I mean? Like. I still I drive by Brisbane all the time. Like, huh, remember Julie's over there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, look what they did in the building over here. I'm like, I'm like my father, like pointing out to how San Francisco's changed all the things we knew. Remember the laundromat that I almost set on fire when I was when I lived in Brisbane? I do. Just your land, your your landlady that didn't want you taking showers at didn't night. Didn't want didn't want me to run the water past like 11 p.m. <laughs> and it's like, well, you you are a tyrant, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> but we all you accept it. You just accept it. You're like whatever. It's like I don't think I ever told you when when I when I moved here but left the other apartment, which is of course where kind of funny started in the spare bedroom. Like it was that thing of like I was the one left holding the bag. Like I was the only I was the last man standing in the the place. So like I had to deal with the landlord. And at one point when he came down there and was complaining about how the walls looked and everything else, and so much of this shit was just like house how sucked to begin with. He was like, and just so you know, like if it. It, to fix all of this stuff if it costs more than the security deposit i'm gonna have to charge you for that and that's when i was like that was the straw i was like the fuck you will that is not what a security deposit is security deposit is if i walk out right now that's what you get to fix this entire place i'm not paying you more <laughs> back down oh, real man. quick on that those Damn. are the days 
yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Dude, I, I appreciate that you stood up for yourself in that moment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, old school Ryan would have been like, yes, yeah, sir, here's my bank account. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do, is there a turning point for where old school Ryan became a more mm-hmm. adult Ryan who isn't worrying about this stuff? Or is it all chip damage? It's all little XP games. <laughs> chip damage. Oh, my God. You're funny. You Thank should you. do this for a living. Thank you. Um, I I don't know, man. Don't we all don't we all learn lessons gradually over time? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's a being an adult like I am I I would like to think I am now a confident adult, and that is a culmination of so many lessons and and pains and joys over how many years you know it's been twelve or thirteen years since I like moved out to California to start like to be to be like on my own and you know and i'm like i'm still like a young guy like i'm not even i'm not even like fucking 40 yet like i i don't even have a right to call myself like i'm an old man i've been around the block well i, I feel not. like we're in this weird spot where we're not young but we're not old if that makes sense yeah you know what i mean where i i, I feel still like the kid but obviously i'm an adult but it's like i'm not also not like i don't know it's something about like and not even like in the traditional midlife crisis way but like 40 sounds old or not old but established i guess more of it right or, and like, 40 is like middle classic middle age right and like, so like i was I mean, yeah we're reviewing uh miles morales or whatever and we were getting ready for the spoiler cast and i left the uh the characters up on the screen and that way i could look at bios if i needed a name or something and i left it on his mom and his mom's 42 and like i looked at it and i was like 22 and like that's seven years from where i am which sounds like a lot but it's not when i look like it was just like such a weird thing i'm like how close to being 42 and like and like it, like how old would miles have been <laughs> like i'm doing math of like yep. could i have miles <laughs> right now like what is oh going my, on oh my god am i close to death is my kid <laughs> <What's>, spider man <laughs> it's my kid spider man <laughs> am i miles's mom i don't know how to get this information <laughs> uh, uh, do you yeah. still listen to k-pop that's one of the questions everybody wants to know oh okay so okay we can Let's just take a brief tangent into Let's K-pop do. land. K-pop okay? town, here we go. K-pop town, population. Us. Well, us and, and probably a, a it's lot. It's bigger of, than ever. Every time I see I mean, these BTS yeah. kids, I'm like, oh, I remember Ryan liked K-pop. I, this is Mr. Taxi. Stop. I'll never forget Mr. Taxi. Mr. Taxi. Mr. Taxi. You loved it. It was your Mr. favorite track. Taxi, Taxi, Taxi. It was a great track. You <laughs> still remember it. Oh, I'm impressed. Oh, yeah. I, when, when, when Jessica left Girls' Generation, I had to turn away from the whole genre. <gasps> wow. Now, now also, <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, it's really hard to keep up with something like like. Well, I mean, now it's a little easier, but like, kind of at that time when K-pop really started permeating American mainstream pop culture, uh-huh. there was still a lot of the reporting, a lot of the news, a lot of like the being in the in that culture and in that pop um, phenomenon. Like, if you don't know Korean, you're only going to get so much. You're going to get, like, sure. the translations. You're going to get, like, you know, the the fan sites that are reporting on it. And, like, it's kind of exhausting to keep up with all that stuff. And at a certain point, I was like, I, I'm good. I'll just, like, catch a YouTube video now and then. And I kind of just, like, turned away from it. But I do I do love KDA, the League of Legends. Oh, yeah. Group. They're great, yeah. Their, their tracks are so insanely well-produced. It's 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 not right <laughs> it, it, it is it is very very impressive so that that stuff's really fun but i i find generally now that i like i can't keep up with it there's too much sure, sure. yeah so what do you listen to you were always Dude, so musically inclined that's actually not true right because I, I would always be like, who? Who? Like, what are <laughs> you talking like, about? You were always <laughs> listening to music. It was just the rest of us had no idea who the fuck it was. But you were always listening to music. And I, I feel like I missed out. Like, a lot of people, when they grew up, they, like, were just listening to music all the time. And I had, like, like one CD on repeat. So I sure. feel like I missed a lot of my musical education. I listened to <laughs> here's Here's a dad. Here's a dad statement. I listened to a lot of jazz. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, I listened to... Um, I mean, I kind of, I actually like like putting public radio on because oh, sometimes sure. I'll get like exposed to like kind of weird or e- eccentric groups that I wouldn't normally listen to. Um, my partner has like really diverse and interesting tastes, so I like to listen to music that she listens to. Um, 
And then I ultimately listened to a lot of Daniel Tiger and Pete the Cat music because that's the kind of family friendly music that has to happen in our house. Understandable. So, Understandable. Yeah. And um, okay, hold on a second. Hold on. If I if I open up my web browser, am I gonna like crash the internet? Like what how does this recording work? Am you I gonna be fine? Crash? You should be fine. Okay. All right. I'm gonna quickly open up. I just want to give you someone that I have been listening to recently, which no, is fine. um let's give let's give chat something to look up. Uh the artist Ile, you spell you spell her name I L E. She has an album called Almadura. She's a, <clears throat> I want to say that she's a Puerto Rican artist. She is Puerto I, Rican. I'm, I'm yes. on her uh, Wikipedia here. Um, she, that, the like one, which track do I flip in love from that album? It's, uh, it might be the title. No, Contra Todo. So that, that, that's right there is my jam. So I'll just say that like that's that's one that I've I've been for some reason just like I think I saw her on like a tiny desk concert and I started listening to her and she's so awesome and that song is amazing. According to Wikipedia, she's also known as PG thirteen, which is a dope name. PG thirteen? But yeah, the SEO yeah. value on that must not be high. Yeah, no, that's why they're gonna call her. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Everybody go go listen to that song. She's really cool. And that song, like put on a good pair of headphones because the, the bass and percussion of that song is it completely sick. It's it's off. It's off the charts, Greg. Off the charts. Off the charts. There you go. That's a hot that's a hot tip from Ryan Clements on what you should be listening to right now. Yep. Speaking of what you should be listening to right now, you're listening to We Have Cool Friends, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, each and every week, we interview one of our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. You can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to be part of the friend zone where you ask our guests questions. I have two lined up from Ross Green and Soul Porpoise. But before I do that, let's talk about our sponsors. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, here we go. We're starting with MeUndies. The holidays can be a stressful time, especially with things looking a little different this year. That's why our friends at MeUndies curated a list of stuff your friends really want so you can soften the stress and win the holidays. Seriously, you're going to be the number one gift giver ever. Their next level, Micro Modal, is not only super soft, but breathable, light, and impossibly cozy. The best part? You can get all your gift giving done from home. Avoid the malls, hit pause, and gift new undies, PJ sets, slippers, and everything else you need to have a stress free and comfortable holiday. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you know I only wear me undies underwear. Isn't that right, Kevin? That's a, that's a fact. Me too. Thank you. I threw out all my yeah, underwear. You too. Just the same thing. Well, you copied pack. me. Remember, I did yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was okay. very impressed. I was like, man, Greg Miller's doing this. I'm in. Uh, you should get committed to it and get your family committed to it. Remember, you can get the Me Undies membership with a Me Undies gift card. The membership is a subscription that sends new pairs right to their door so they never need to run out of undies again. Uh, Me Undies has a great offer for my listeners. Any first time purchasers will get 15% off and free shipping. Me Undies also has their problem free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions. To get your 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's Me undies.com slash morning up next ladies and gentlemen is manscaped ryan's strapped in for this one <laughs> the holidays are here have you made your wish list yet our sponsor today is the no has the number one wish for gift of the year manscaped the best in men's below the belt and above the belt grooming manscaped is here to ensure you're taking care of your manhood and your nose hairs with their new performance package Ho, 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 fellas. Naughty or nice, tis the season to perform. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Manscaped has been very good to kind of funny. We all use it, and I'm looking good. Let's just leave it at that, all right? Looking good everywhere. Where? All right? Everywhere, well, above and below the belt, I can say now. Look at my nose hairs. Dynamite. I can't show you anything else, but it's dynamite as well, let me Great tell you. nose hair you got there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you're in luck, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this holiday season because the Manscaped Performance Package is the ma ma ultimate men's hygiene bundle and makes for the perfect gift. Imagine opening an attractive box that says, your balls will thank you, uh, with the most <laughs> sought after gadgets and scents a person could find. Included in the new package is the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, which is waterproof. Put comments on screen. It's waterproof. Uh, which is waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor power, 360-degree rotor dual sense blade <laughs> look guys 90 
or no, I'm sorry, 79% of partners polled admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff. Why not use the best tools for the job? Uh, this bundle also includes the Lawnmower 3.0 tr- trimmer, the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt, and body. Uh, the dads, like Ryan Clements, won't stop talking about this. Uh, the teens secretly buy this, and the women will love you for it. Tis the season to manscape, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, and friends the best gift of all, the manscape performance package get 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com slash morning that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com slash morning what are you waiting for go whack your weeds and make santa proud 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com slash morning ryan i tell you i love the manscapes just all about it they're just like this is who we are we're gonna write the ad copy to be funny are you happy with where you are in your career right I'm now? I'm thrilled. Like, again, like people get it or whatever. Uh, 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 Kevin, go back to me. Uh, the final sponsor for this episode is Blue Chew. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go. Now you can increase your performance and get a little extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. That's blue, like the color blue. Uh, blue Chew brings you the first chewable uh, with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Uh, you can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach, so you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is a fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at a pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Uh, they're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships directly, they're cheaper than a pharmacy, no awkwardness, and you don't have to leave the house. Right now, you can get a special deal for our listeners. Uh, visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code FUNNY. Just pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's B L U E CHEW, C H E W.com. Promo code FUNNY to try it for free. Blue Chew is better che- is the better cheaper choice and we thank them for sponsoring this podcast and remember when you support our sponsors you help make this podcast possible so please use our promo code funny at bluechew.com ryan clements i'm here back I'm, to you i am still here <laughs> come back just off like, I, I am not i am not a manscaped adam you know, reed fan no no i mean every everything was lovely you, you killed it uh bravo to the manscaping uh copy writers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i think that the thing there's something about i'm gonna i'm like gonna kill the the momentum we've got going with this no, go for it. show but there's something about the image with the the meandies copy yeah there's something about the the problem free philosophy that like i that's what that's when i started losing it was when i was just picturing like someone putting on their underwear and being like i've got a problem you know, like, and they, and and I need a solution, <laughs> and they, and then, then they like sprint, sprint, sprint to the phone, and they're like, "Get me me undies." I, I, I love it. There's something they're very good. Though. They really, they're really good. Yeah, they got pajama pants too, Ryan. They're great too. Kevin okay. and I wear those a lot. Okay. I have Star Wars ones. I like them. I oh like my gosh, them. adorable, adorable. I know. I know. Uh, Rob- the- oh, go ahead. Go. No, no, go, 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 go. Give me the Ryan. Question. You're entering the friend zone. First up is going to be kind of funny best friend Ross Green, who wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can. It says, hi, Ryan, parentheses, and Greg. Do you have a favorite episode of Beyond during your time on the podcast? My own personal favorite is 150, as I feel that was the real meshing of the dynamic trio of you, Greg, and Colin. Thanks, and Beyond! Beyond! Can I, can I still say that anymore? Yeah, I owe Jonathan yeah. Dornbush a nickel every time I say it, but I still do <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for this question. Uh, favorite episode. It's going to be impossible to say because they all, I mean, when you look back at all the episodes as the creator of them, they all kind of mesh together. together. Yeah. Um, I, I will say that the, the episode, I forgot which anniversary it was, but the, it might've been 150, but the one where we, um, debuted the world is saved or no, no. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. The world is saved. Yeah. That was 200. Um, that was 200. That one, to me, that one still remains very special. Yeah, um, the live ones always do. That 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 was incredible, and I mean the work that that Panda and Danny and everyone um, did on that on that animation, like it still gets me. I still yeah. love that. Oh yeah, I, lo- I still I go back and watch song. those. Yeah. So that one was special. I just I love all the little the little jokes that we've had over the years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like the 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 being possessed, like you you being like Sean and and like <laughs> like like stuff like that still gets me, and I I think about I think about those moments, those memories, um and and yeah, it's just 
love love it. Um, I don't I don't I don't think I have a, a favorite episode. I well, that's, that's I crazy. love oh, yeah, again. I, and I know that like you know you it's just so weird because not even live events now. But I don't know how much people talk to you at, when you're at PlayStation even about Beyond and how much that is. But it's I remember not the event obviously because they all run together too. But someone talking to me like, oh my favorite episode is this, and I go back and listen to it all the time. And I was like, you listen to a podcast that was like weekly about PlayStation news all. And, and they were like, yeah, and I remember, I, I think I asked the room and then I think I've put it up on other stuff too. Like, does this happen? Like so many hands went up of like, oh yeah, I do that all the time. And like people's favorite episodes, people will literally be like, oh, podcast beyond episode 214 was just that you guys did this and had that. And I was like, awesome. Like I don't <laughs> ever think of it like that, you know? Yeah. I, uh, if only I could live the life of someone just listening to Beyond and not making it for so many years. Sure. That, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, uh, yeah. You, you were talking about that, and I know that you're such a fan of nostalgia that I, I swear to God, I didn't plan this. But talking about your favorite episodes of Beyond, I still have the folder from where I took down all of the artwork that was on the pillars of IGN, if you remember, from when we, when we wanted the people to send in uh, their art of you getting killed. They were like, <laughs> like, wait, like do, you, do you remember? What was that? There was like this period of time where there was so much fan art of me being like executed. If you slaughtered. remember PlayStation for some reason, I mean, because they're great or whatever, but gave us a bunch of Killzone 3 uh, Hellgast editions to send off. And we were like, okay, to do that, send in artwork send in whatever artwork of and we i think we gave the idea of have it be ryan getting killed because that's how cool we were and this is here's undertaker smashing through the wall and stabbing you i love the reaction the pointing instead of like <laughs> colin just pointing at that making <laughs> colin just pointing and me being flabbergasted by it yeah like that's the funny, I remember like we hung on, we are always so proud to get cool artwork and to have it and just, I we took it all down. Yeah, My, this yeah. one too, uh, this is uh, one that I guess it gives away the email or whatever, but after one of the episodes, this is uh, from Chris C C Citrus, uh, subject line uh, map. And then the body of it reads, Beyond, due to, a recent, due to recent political developments, I believe this map actually depicts the geographic makeup of the USA oh, uh, and it's oh Washington Tacoma robot or whatever. Washington where, Tacoma robot. Yeah, where I didn't know <laughs> yeah. what the fuck was going on. I mean, Washington Tacoma, you know what I mean? Like, Washington Tacoma robot. Robot. <laughs> I'm not sorry, I'm in here. This is, I hold on, going through, like this is an ancient relic here, but if you remember, I think it was, if you remember Doug Buzz from the IGN boards, he was trying to get hired, so he made this like whole yes. this this yes. thing and gave yes. every one of us I profiles remember. for this like comic strip he wanted to write about us or whatever. <laughs> Clements is very easy to draw, so I like him. <laughs> so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how if you think if you ever thought none of it means anything to us, it means something very different in the way of having oh, here's another great one. This is from Daniel Smith of me as a hellgas murdering you. <laughs> why, Greg? Why? <laughs> That's just how we wanted it to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, beyond it's so crazy. You know what I mean? To think back about the lineage of that show and like you're talking about nostalgia, right? And like I think you were talking about earlier about nostalgia. Hold on. I don't want to roll over any of the art that fell out of it. Nostalgia and history and contributing and building something, right? And like that is so much to me what my legacy is at our, our legacy is at IGN, right. Of the mm -hmm. fact that that started in like, it still goes to this day. And like to have Dornbush, who's a admitted, you know, fan of us from back in the day, hosting it and driving. It's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel really, I feel really lucky that I was on that show and it, and it's amazing how it can still enter back into our orbit, you know, through these memories and through these funny stories. And yeah, it's wild. Um, Final question from the friend zone comes from Soul Porpoise, who says, Soul Ryan Clements. <laughs> soul Porpoise. Yeah, yeah. That, but it's soul funny. like your soul, not like the singular porpoise. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, for Clements, I know it might be tough, but the world needs to know. Can you please show us what cyp Cypher Filton looks like? <laughs> I love that. I love that this is like still a thing that. That people a, remember. A long running legacy of if Cypher I Filton. No, I can't. I mean, no one can ever know. But I, I have to ask, if I turn off my video, is that going to disrupt Kevin's work? And if I yes. turn it back on again? Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I can that. make it work. I can make it work. Um, 
for no 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 it's fine i don't I'm have to turn saying, it off. I'm, I'm a professional I, I can do it no i mean i i i, I sorry hold on one second i have to something fell all I wanted to say is it's wonderful to be back on the show. <laughs> oh, my God. He still does it. You can still do the voice so well. <laughs> it's because I just heard it recently. Someone like was was like, again, yeah, like some some clips were bubbling up of like, oh, Cypher Filton when Cypher Filton was created. Yeah. And yeah, I, I so I heard it recently. So I cheated. I actually remember what he said. Otherwise, I would have been like, I don't fucking know what he sounds like. Get out of here, kid. I don't even know what that <laughs> is. I hate Cypher Filton. Cypher Filton? Never yeah, heard of him. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I love I love Cypher Filton, but no one will ever know what I look like. Understandable. When doing, except you guys, I guess, because you saw the horror of it in, in real time. <laughs> Back in the day when there wasn't a camera in the room all the time. <laughs> I know that's wild. Ryan, thank you for being one of our cool friends. Of course, thank you for having me. This has been so great to be here, and uh, I will. I hope. I hope to return one day. Long overdue, if you ask me. You're always welcome here. You know that. So I don't have to wait seven years. No, no, no. that's it. We don't have to worry about it, especially not have to hit anybody up to try to get approval for you to come through. <laughs> well, until I work for another studio and then it's then it's all over. But then when you come in, you just negotiate in that contract. You say, hey, I'll do this job, but I need mm-hmm. to make sure that I can yeah. go on a podcast anytime. Um, yes, that sounds good. I'll make sure that that's one of my main talking points <laughs> in the interview. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks, uh, no, anytime, man. I love you. I miss you. Love you, too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen remember this is we have cool friends uh cool show we interview our cool friends about the cool things they're doing you of course can watch it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games as we record it you can watch it later youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listen on podcast services around the globe you could go to you or patreon.com slash kind of funny to be part of the show get it ad free and have a good time uh ryan where can people keep up with you probably for now just on twitter yes, i am still Still at Plum Cider. Never PW, give it up. PWAM Cider. Um, I also did launch a website just to kind of be a little online presence and portfolio. Sure. So that if people want to go check that out, it's just my full name, which is RyanDouglasClements.com. Um, I also, I'll just give a little teaser here just to support contract and freelancing stuff. I sure. did actually start a small business just that's basically me. I am the business. That's small. That's small. But, um, it is very small, but I will, uh, I'll probably be revealing that and posting like a, a link to that. It's probably just going to take over what my portfolio is uh, in, in the near future. Well, fantastic, Ryan. I can't yeah. wait to see what you do next. And I can't wait to one day find out about the game you worked on. Dude, I cannot wait to, I cannot wait to fucking talk about it. Like seriously, it, to, to work at, to work very hard on something for two years and then just not be able to share it with everyone until it's revealed. It's painful. Let me let me talk about it. <laughs> let me talk about it. All right. Well, Ryan, we love you. Everybody go follow you. Keep up with you and everybody else who's watching. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.